this week, Una Dose of Trace was supported by Skillshare and by you for watching. So thank you. This story is so heavy, it's massive. Recently at the Center for European Nuclear Research, or CERN, aka Physics Disneyland, or actually wouldn't it be more like Universal? <laughs> anyway, they discovered that because of a charm quark asymmetry, we can pretty much explain why our universe exists the way it does. So that's nice, I guess. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, join my Patreon to support the show. I'll see you next time in the future or whatever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So what the heck did we just learn and what is a quark anyway? Obviously I have questions. Hey there, Deep Space fam. Belly up to Quark's bar and let's learn about quarks. You likely already know that our universe is made of matter. Antimatter is also a thing. Maybe you saw my Seeker mini doc about it. I don't know, maybe you did. At the moment of the Big Bang, the universe contained equal parts matter and antimatter. But immediately afterward, all the overlapping matter and antimatter annihilated each other in a huge energy amazing orgy. Most of the universe in that moment became energy. Only one particle for every billion survived the great annihilation as I'm gonna call it from now on. But why exactly wasn't there 50-50 matter-antimatter out of the Big Bang? What happened? Mathematically, <laughs> we should have had a perfect balance. So what caused this imbalance? All matter we know of is symmetrical. Hydrogen and antihydrogen are exactly the same, but with flipped charges. An antimatter chair allegedly would be exactly the same as a matter chair, except that it couldn't exist in our universe. There shouldn't be any imbalance at all, and yet here we are with matter everywhere. So physicists at CERN have been trying to find out which tiny bit of matter threw the whole system out of balance. They answered this just recently using the LHCB, one of the many experiments on the Large Hadron Collider particle accelerator under the borders of France and Switzerland. Something is up with the charm quark. Or maybe it's not. Hang on, because this is where it gets a bit strange little particle physics humor there. The LHC and the experiments on it essentially smash hydrogen ions together to learn more about them. It's like crashing millions of cars together to figure out how they work on the inside. And what you're really trying to figure out is like how they put the CD player together. The LHCB, one of the detectors on the ring, well, Actually, let me just read the abstract. A search for charge parity CP violation in D0 K minus K plus and D0 pi minus pi plus decays is reported using PP collision data corresponding to an integrated luminosity of six n minus one to the negative first corrected at the center of mass energy of 13 TeV with the LHCB detector. <laughs> Oh my god, the physics is hard. So let me break it down like the LHCB did. There are six types or flavors of quarks. Up and down, top and bottom, charm and strange. Each have different properties, and they tend to pair up to make mesons or triple up to make baryons. There are over 200 different combinations that we know of. For example, a proton is two up and one down. A neutron is two down and one up. Electrons are something else. They are not made of quarks. They're leptons. It's a whole different thing. Charm quarks are more massive, but they don't seem to make up anything that doesn't decay right away into something else. So we can make and study them pretty easily in charm factories. And remember, all matter has antimatter, even quarks. So they made a bunch of what they called D0 and anti-D zeros. D0 is a charm quark and an anti-up quark. Anti-D0 is an anti-charm quark and a regular up quark. Got it? Great. Normally these would decay into pions or kaons, but here's where they broke the rules. About one tenth of 1% of the time, these D0s favored one of the two camps meaning they broke CP symmetry or charge symmetry, and they broke that. And that's a big deal. I know it doesn't sound like it, but it's huge. Why do you care? <laughs> you might not. But it might explain part of why we have more matter and almost no antimatter in our universe. Why the Big Bang didn't just create a big universe of energy because it had 50-50 of everything and nothing else. They still don't know exactly why yet. They're trying to figure out how to use the existing laws of physics to explain what they saw in the experiment. And they've seen the symmetry break before with bottom and strange quarks, but being able to see it in more particles, that's humongous. So here comes some of my other questions. Why are there six quarks, but protons and neutrons only seem to use ups and downs? Well, a few physicists think there might not 
actually be six quarks. There might just be the two. But because the universe has more than three dimensions, when we look at these tiny little particles in quantum mechanics, we're seeing reflections of them in varying dimensions of space-time. So our dimension makes the matter with up and down, but the strange in the bottom and the charm in the top are different geometrical figures of space and time. They're in different dimensions. So even though we see them with slightly different masses, they might actually be the same or just a different universe with a slightly different shape. It's confusing and amazing and wonderful in all the best ways that theoretical particle physics can be. In case you're curious, which I hope you are, let's go one level deeper, shall we? <laughs> so quarks are never seen alone. They're always grouped, but something makes them do that. What if it's because quarks are made of something else? What is smaller than atoms? Quarks. What's smaller than quarks? A Swedish physicist theorizes that it would be prions. Prions could make up quarks. You'd need three prions to make all the different quarks we know of, and there might be some prions left over from the Big Bang out there that never got made into matter as we know it, they theorize. Those prion piles would be super dense, denser than neutron stars, and hard to detect because they're not really matter, and this might help explain dark matter. But while some physicists are on board with the prions, some are preved off and think it's rubbish. This episode of Una Dose of Trace was graciously supported by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, technology, photography, marketing, or film and video, which is of course my favorite. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity or creativity or just learn new skills to advance your career, you can use Skillshare for that. There's so much to think about and I learned a lot watching Debbie in the art of the story creating visual narratives it was so good. So go learn something on Skillshare. Because you're here with me on Uno Dose of Trace, you can actually get two months of Skillshare for free, and after that it's still super affordable, an annual subscription is only 10 bucks a month. The first 500 of the nerd fam to use the magic link and join the more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare will get two months for free, and you support Uno Dose of Trace. It's a win-win. So, now you know why some of your friends who just follow the super intense and exciting world of quantum particle physics were particularly excited fairly recently. Let me know if you have any new science that you want me to talk about here on Uno Dose of Trace. Obviously, I get excited about it. Thank you so much for watching. Come follow me on Instagram because I'm about to head to Europe for almost a month to do some hello sciencing. Make sure you follow me so you get all the adventures. And if you have any ideas of what to do in Greece or Vienna or in Switzerland and France, if you know what I'm saying, make sure you come and follow me and tell me all about it. I am Trace. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.